you can literally see all of the residue on the engine from where my expensive coolant decided to go. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and back to what was the cheapest running V8 Jaguar on the market in the UK when I bought it. However, it's, well, voluntarily relinquished its title as that because despite it being in the garage since my last update on the car, it's, well, not running. More on that in a minute. If you want to see more content with this Jag and you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure to do so now by clicking that big red button. But without further ado, let's talk about the first bills I've had on this car and why it's, well, still not drivable. So it is regrettable that the car has been sitting here for the best part of, well, a couple of weeks, collecting leaves on the front and sitting on trickle charge, on life support really, whilst we wait to get it fixed. Now, when I bought the car and in the video I did, revealing this car, I did mention that there was a couple of issues that I wanted to take it to the garage for, namely a engine misfire or suspected engine misfire. There was a slight coolant leak amongst a few other things. And as I alluded to in my last video, if you haven't watched it, I recommend you do now, my 24 hour challenge living in this Jaguar. Well, it had a little bit of a, I don't know how to put it, it, it leaked itself a bit, let's say. The expansion tank decided to blow up, which holds all of the coolant for the car, and it overheated. Luckily, we were just down the road from home, so we were able to limp it back. And, well, I took it to the garage, and I've spent a number of pounds on the car. So we can go through that receipt now, but unfortunately, it's still not running. In this folder here is my first, maybe of many, receipts for this car, and I'm probably gonna need two hands to open this, so bear with me. So we have here then the work that I had done to this car last week, totaling 555 pounds. And believe it or not, that did include replacing the expansion tank, which is what had caused this horrible leak, which meant I couldn't drive the car. Unfortunately, because, well, this is an early car and these parts are hard to come by, this part was 166 pounds, I think, plus VAT, I'm guessing. Um, which is quite a lot for an expansion tank considering it's just basically well it is a plastic container as well as that the ignition coil and spark plug on cylinder two was replaced that's the only thing that came up on their code reader as being a problem with the engine and i'm pleased to report that the engine is now idling and running just absolutely stupendously and in fact uh, i did have the pleasure of driving this car mm, about 30 miles or so before it uh, well decided to kill itself again so the engine i'm now very happy and satisfied that that misfire has been uh, resolved and yeah as you can see we've spent 555 pounds on a new expansion tank ignition coil spark plug obviously the coolant and labor in there actually only 225 pounds worth of labor most of it as you can see was in the parts so the Jaguar was actually in the shop for a little over a week, which is a little bit frustrating because obviously I just bought the car and I wanted to be using it and obviously filming videos with it and carrying out some of the road trip plans I have with it. However, it needed the work done and that expansion tank part, which was very expensive, was also very hard to find and so it took that a while to come. Once it arrived, it was super easy to fit, I'm sure. Anyway, they gave me the call to come and pick the car up, which was super exciting. And the next day I took it on a little run, maybe 20 or 30 miles before, well, I dropped Katie off at the shops actually. And I was just sat in Sainsbury's car park with the car idling, just admiring how smooth those engine revs were. And the next thing I saw was steam coming up off the bonnet again, just like what had happened the first time when the car overheated. Uh, well, I was very confused. I actually checked the oil level and I thought it was oil that was leaking. Checked all the other sort of fluids and brake fluid and power steering fluid to see if it could just be anything leaking because of course it wasn't the coolant that had just been fixed. However, after loads of researching and tinkering and, and looking around, I wasn't certain that it was oil. I think I'd come to the conclusion that it was, but I wasn't certain and I checked the expansion tank and I couldn't believe my eyes that it was just completely empty again. Let me show you in fact what happens when we do put fluid in the expansion tank because well it's certainly not what's meant to happen let's put it that way. Open up the bonnet here to reveal the gorgeous I mean absolutely gorgeous 4 litre V8 engine and presumably to reveal and also 
yep, very empty expansion tank. Let me show you. Well, I'll show you absolutely nothing because there is nothing in there. So let's fill it back up with water just for demonstration purposes to show you what happens. So now if you look closer, you can see it's just in between the max and minimum level. But of course, it's not going to stay that way for long, is it? Uh, because what it's going to do is empty itself back again. As you can see, in literally no time at all, it's already started having a little wee. Let's just switch the car back on. Gorgeous sound from the exhaust there on a cold start. And as you can see, engine super smooth, along with the revs, if you were to look at those, it's all running super nice. So the car is still holding its coolant at the moment, although the water temperature gauge is still stuck on cold. Um, but what seems to happen is after a certain period, something seems to go. I think a hose has probably split now, and so that just gives way and it empties itself within seconds. In fact, I've got a video of it doing it the other night, so if it doesn't do it now, I'll overlay that shot. So yeah, the coolant issue, which I spent hundreds of pounds fixing, well, was futile because there's obviously another coolant issue. Now, hopefully, it's just a faulty expansion tank and that can get replaced under warranty, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's a separate issue. It sounds like it's probably a hose that when the car gets up to some sort of, sort of temperature, the hose just decides to go, or there's a tiny little split in it and obviously the heat expands it. And But for whatever reason, it deposits its coolant very quickly all of a sudden after or during the car as it warms up. So it's undrivable and needless to say, after I film this video actually, I'm dropping it back at the same garage who will hopefully be able to look at it again, tell me what's going on now and get it fixed. But otherwise, if that is the only issue, which it was when they looked at it, just the coolant and the misfire, 600 quid in or so, 1400 purchase price and two grand into this car, then I'm still quite happy because this is a really rare car actually. If you look at Auto Trader, there's not many of these early four liter V8s. There's quite a few of the 4.2s, which came in the sort of facelift variant, which arguably is nicer and more desirable. But this early 4.0 liter V8 is quite rare. So two grand into this one on around 100,000 miles, I'm not too unhappy about that. And of course it makes great content for you guys, if I can actually use the thing. So there's a quick update on why the car has been sitting here collecting leaves, very regrettably. But hopefully, once and for all, that will be sorted. And then I'm really excited to finally put some proper miles on this thing. It's not all bad, though, because there's a few things that have been bugging me since I picked the car up. One of which is right in plain view, which is the rusted and worn wipers. So I'm going to replace those right now. Uh, along with the rear number plate, it doesn't quite fit. You know, the S-types need the proper oval shaped one. So I've got one of those on order. It's not arrived yet and it probably won't come before the car goes in uh, later on today. So we'll do that another time. But I'm going to get that rear number plate replaced. And of course, I'll switch the front one out at the same time. And the other thing I'm just going to quickly do today is just put a new air filter in the car. Um, I looked at the air filter the other day and it was quite dirty. And who knows when that was last done. Four quid off Halfords. Let's get that in the car. And um, then we'll put this this Jaguar back on, on trickle charge until later I'll take it to the garage and hopefully, well, the next video will be a bit more positive. We'll be going somewhere or doing something exciting. And I won't be telling you that buying the cheapest Jaguar in the country was a bad idea because I still think it maybe wasn't. I guess you could call me a martyr because I, I do this so that you guys don't have to, but all being said, come on, I mean, 1,400 quid for a 1999 Jaguar, what do you expect? You know, you can't seriously expect it to be absolutely fine, and I didn't. So I'm not complaining. It's a little bit frustrating, of course. I just want to drive the car. I love it. It's gorgeous. I want to use this wooden steering wheel more, um, but what can you expect? It was a 1,400 quid car, but fingers crossed, that is all. And we're back on the road very soon. Right, let's change these wipers and this air filter quickly then before it starts to rain. Okay, 
wipers we got there after a little while, they uh, are working much better now. Now let's quickly unclip this air filter housing think we can probably just do it like this yeah so you can obviously disconnect here these little bolts but uh, there's no need because all we've got to do is slip a finger in pop out the old example here shimmy out there there you go very uh, filthy definitely worth replacing I've just got a cheapo Crossland air filter here I think this costs four quid if that, uh, this should hopefully be the right size. Let's just compare it to the old one. Yeah, about spot on, slightly different actually, but you can see just the difference there, it's crazy. And it's simple as pulling that back out and shimming it back in side, make sure the seals go all around the edge the lip of the air filter goes all around the edge squeeze it in there lovely and then we're going to pop the housing back over the top two well designed little clips are going to go in there and then we just clip them back on jobs are good and so happy with that, wipers fitted. Wipers are just one of those things that if they're not working properly, they're just tremendously annoying, but it's a simple enough thing that even someone like me can just do it at home. So let's just pop the key in. There you go, look at that. Lovely, let's give it a little squirt. Oh, it's your maiden squirt. Lovely stuff, happy with those. And um, yeah, as mentioned, of course, just want to change this rear plate. We've got one on order, so that should hopefully arrive soon and we can fit that by the time the next video comes around. But although it's, yeah, very worn, I think this is even the original plate looking at the old documentation. We're just going to get one that fits properly in this space here. It will look much better. And um, yeah, we'll also replace the front one whilst we're at it. In terms of other cosmetic things, well, this side marker here has been stuck on with chewing gum, so maybe I'll find a more permanent fix to that. There's obviously a few rust spots, namely the surface rust spot here, which maybe, maybe I'll get that sorted. I'd like to get that sorted definitely before I move the car on. Otherwise, it's actually in really good nick. The only other little thing that is questionable on whether we do it or not is whether to remove the original tax disc and parking permit from 2007, the city of Westminster. So someone who owned this car back in the noughties had it in Westminster, which says a lot about the type of car it's the sort of thing you'd want to be seen in Westminster and I certainly wouldn't mind that. So yeah, it's a case of whether we remove those or we sort of leave all of these old harks back to the car's history on it. I'm not sure, I'll leave that up to you guys in the comments. Comment below whether you, I should leave the original tax disc on or not. So that is all then. I'm gonna take the car over to the garage this evening and uh, hopefully get this coolant issue fixed once and for all so that we can properly take some miles in this car, take it on the road, take it on some adventures, which is exactly what I plan on doing. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below on the tax disc situation and let me know your thoughts on this car. Should I spend a bit more money on it? Should I keep it? What would you like to see me do with it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks all again and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.